Good morning, our honorable guests and distinguished speakers. Welcome back to 2016 Pacific Neighborhood Consortium Annual Conference and Joint Meetings. We are at our last day of the conference, and I hope the last two days have been an amazing experience to all of you. Today, the poster session is from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Please go ahead and stop by the poster area. For those of you who are joining the poster competition, the poster core time is from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Please be ready at the poster area to answer some questions from our poster judges. Closing ceremony will be held at the museum um, lecture hall, venues two, at um, 5 p.m. Also, today is the last day to pick up certificates of attendance. Please um, be sure to pick up at the registration area. May we now begin by inviting Professor John Lehman, Professor of Tanji University and University of Oregon, to introduce our fifth keynote speaker, Professor Yi Ping Hong. Good morning, everyone. Our, uh, our keynote speaker this morning is Professor Yi Ping Hong who uh, is from the Graduate Institute of Networks and Multimedia in the Department of Computer Science at uh, National Taiwan University, and is also a research fellow at the uh, Institute of Information Science, Academia Sinica, where he uh, also used to be deputy director. Uh, Dr. Hong's work is uh, basically in virtual reality, so when we talk about data constructing reality, this is what it really is. And uh, in particular, he's going to talk about uh, immersive experience uh, today. Uh, those of you who went to the uh, Dunhuan exhibit uh, yesterday and saw the uh, 3D exhibit, that was, of course, a static one. And so Professor Hong's work is on the technology required to basically see virtual worlds, not static slideshows, but in real time. So five years from now, when uh, we have this conference, there is at least a reasonable chance that we may be having the whole conference in virtual reality. So with, without further ado, please welcome Professor Holmes. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is really my great pleasure to have this opportunity uh, to speak here, especially when there are Dunhuang exhibit uh, in the Getty. So today I'm going to share with you uh, our uh, research on developing the uh, interactive uh, virtual touring system, uh, especially for touring the uh, Dunhuang Mogao Cave. So first, I'll, I'm going to uh, give a short introduction of our project. And then uh, I explain how we uh, collect those uh, digital content. And I, I will then uh, introduce two versions of our virtual touring system. Uh, one is the um, uh, tabletop version, and the other is the head-mounted display version. So um, it all began with uh, uh, this uh, interactive multi-resolution tabletop display. Um, because we are, uh, began to work on this project in 2004, and finally uh, be able to demonstrate it to National Pets Museum in 2007. And then we work on uh, putting the uh, digital content into this system and deliver it to uh, National Pets Museum. Uh, uh, Professor Guo Pindin is somewhere, yeah, and he must be, uh, uh, he know all, all, all the detail, yeah. So um, since we uh, installed that in the National Pets Museum, uh, I was told that there are more than two million visitors has, uh, used, have used this system. And this system is now uh, used for virtual exhibition of uh, must-see uh, Chinese painting and the calligraphy. So uh, the reason uh, we developed this system is because when you go to the National Pets Museum, and usually you, you are not able to see uh, the, the painting you want to see because 
uh, they are rotating, right? If you want to see uh, certain painting, maybe you have to wait for another two or three years. And they cannot tell you when you, they are going to exhibit it because it depends on the curation, yeah. So, uh, but with our system, <coughs> uh, the visitor uh, will be able to uh, virtually uh, um, enjoy the very detail of the, um, of the Chinese painting and calligraphy. Okay, I'm, sh I'm going to show uh, this video. Okay, this is the table that you can see in National Palace Museum. Yeah. So with this table, uh, the user uh, is, will be able to uh, choose whatever painting he wants. And uh, those Chinese paintings are very long, uh, so you can and paint it left and right, and you can magnify it. <coughs> so what we make, make this system different is we have multi-resolution. Uh, in the middle, the resolution is much higher than the outside because uh, we put a, uh, a projector uh, just focusing on the middle part. Yeah. If you go to uh, the system, you, because human's eye is much sharper than the, the, the camera, so if you go there, you will be able to see something uh, very clear. And you, now we can also augment it, uh, uh, some information. So if you, you cannot recognize uh, the, this character, uh, we can augment something or some information on it. So that is what we delivered to, uh, to National Palace Museum. Uh, and when we are developing this system, um, at that time, the president or the director of the National Press Museum, uh, uh, Professor Si uh, Souqian, and he asked me if I'm interested in doing Dunhuang. So I'm always interested in Dunhuang, so when he invited me to do so, we began to approach the Dunhuang Academy uh, since 2008. And after three years of contact, uh, we finalized that. Uh, we, we will work on uh, these three caves, uh, cave 61, uh, 240, uh, 254, and uh, 332. Uh, but it ended up, uh, we didn't do much on this. We mainly focused on the 61. So I'm going to show this video uh, for 61 because they didn't show the, uh, in, in this Dunhuang exhibit, they didn't show it. Okay, so Dunhuang has, uh, have so many caves, yeah. And this cave is one of the, the large one. <laughs> Sorry that it's in Chinese. <laughs> I'll try to uh, do some translation. Okay, okay, cave 61. Okay. So this cave is, is here, yeah. So when you get in, you will be able to, sudden, to see suddenly a uh, very big uh, cave inside. It's one of the biggest one in, in Dunhuang. And also in the center, there's a, uh, a, a wall. Uh, the, the most valuable, valuable painting is behind this wall, this one. Okay. So it's about uh, 1,000 years ago. And as you can see, all the statue is missing, but you can still see that there are some footprint of it. And there are uh, 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 a lion button, lion leg, and a lion uh, tail. You can see there's a tail. So <laughs> and once we digitize it, we can do the uh, digital restoration yeah, of, of the lion. And okay, this is the lion tail. Only this tail is left, and everything else, uh, almost everything else is missing, except some uh, lion paw and some crow here. Yeah. Okay, this gives you a, a rough idea of. Uh, okay, so what is uh, Cave 61? And Dunhua Academy gave us a. a a large amount of data 
uh, and they scan. They spend a lot of time to scan uh, this cave. Uh, each image is uh, is about uh, three uh, three hundred DPI, and they spend even more time trying to stitch them together and give this to us. And we have to um, build a 3D model and find the corresponding texture and to generate, generate uh, the 3D, mo uh, 3D model for our virtual touring. And this cave is about uh, 30, 13 meter wide and 40 meter depth. And <coughs> This is the model we built, and this is the model after uh, we put uh, the texture on it. So the first stage of this project is, for, is a three years project where we mainly focus on interactive technology for, uh, letting, for building a platform to let people experience the Dunhuang. And uh, uh, about the end of this project, because the wearable device began to uh, uh, prevail, and uh, we are able to get some uh, hand mount display. So we began to plan for uh, the next stage of, of this project, uh, which tried to apply the wearable uh, computing technology for uh, experience the, the virtual reality of, of, of Zhenghuang, which gives you even better user experience. Okay. So uh, this project uh, mainly uh, consists of uh, uh, three research teams, one from National Taiwan University, one from Academia Sinica, and one from Donghuang Research Academy. And it was mainly sponsored by uh, Jiang Jingguo Foundation for International Scholar the Exchange, and uh, uh, recently is also uh, funded by Mi uh, Ministry of Science and Technology of Taiwan. So when we begin to work on uh, this project, uh, we try to understand uh, uh, what is the, the demand of the, the Dunhuang. And Dunhuang, the academy has three missions. One is tourism, the other is research, and this one is probably most important, uh, uh, preservation. Somehow, uh, this mission uh, kind of uh, conflict <coughs> because all the tourists want to go into this cave, right? But if too many people go into this cave because of breathing, uh, it, it can get very humid and it's easier to uh, ruin those uh, uh, morale painting. So it would be great if uh, and they can let most people uh, visit the, 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 uh, the cave virtually, okay. But this has to be so real, or sometimes even uh, better than uh, you see the real. For example, if you go to uh, use our uh, table for, for virtual uh, viewing the Chinese painting, uh, sometimes the resolution is even better than you can see with the real, because the painting probably is very high. And, and when they show the painting, they don't give a very uh, bright light, uh, to try to you know, protect the painting. So it's so high and not bright, so it's not easy to see the detail. But with our uh, uh, interactive table, you can see very detail, very high resolution one. And I know that some researcher in National Pets Museum, um, they even use this table to do their research because if you want to uh, take a look at a certain painting, you have to apply for it, and it's very troublesome. But uh, if you, you just use the digital way, it's, it's much easier. You can do it anytime. Right? And uh, I know some researcher has some funding using our table. And for this, uh, Dunhuang also wants uh, most tourists to do the virtual touring. Uh, nowadays, they have the replica uh, cave. Um, and they also have the uh, uh, digital center, but most of them are not, uh, mm, uh, for, for, for the replica, you cannot do very big one, you cannot do every one, right? And uh, 
for, for the digital theater, it's not really interactive. You just sit there. Mm. Everyone, everybody's just watching the same movie, okay? You, you just follow uh, the pace of the director. And if you have special interest, uh, it's, or you want to uh, have different kind of interaction, uh, different with others, then it's impossible. So we begin to uh, study uh, what the tourists did when they are in the cave, okay? And when they, they walk into the cave, they have the spatial information of the cave. And they, they, they begin to realize how big is the cave, and, the, and also, uh, uh, the tour guide will be able to tell the story behind those cave paintings. And they have freedom to uh, explore or to, to watch what they want to watch, right? So our goal is to provide the user a, a realistic, interactive experience of uh, touring the cave without really walking into the cave physically, yeah? So that you can have the tourism and the preservation or satisfied. So to do this, we first need the, the content, right? And so, so I'm, I mentioned that we got the, uh, the raw image from the Dunhuang, and we built a 3D model, but just, just that is not enough, because we want to uh, put more information on that. Um, once it's digitized, we can augment some information on it. So, uh, we have worked on three kinds of uh, content. One is the animation for some selected mural, and uh, we also work on the digital restoration of 2D painting and the uh, digital restoration of 3D statue. Okay. So uh, those are some of the animation or story that we have made for, uh, for, for the, the caves. For take take an example, for example, the uh, th this war is the uh, Western War. Uh, I've just shown the video behind the Cave 61, and this is so big. This this is uh, 13 meter and 3.6 meter high. <coughs> Even if you walk inside, it's not that easy for you to see something high above, right? Uh, this is a 3.6 meter, but it's not from the floor, so it's even higher. It's like a five meter high. And it's impossible for you to get a, uh, a ladder to go up. So it, how do you uh, explain that? Okay. Uh, so what we did is we have the animation to tell the, the user uh, what's the meaning of, 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 of this painting. Uh, this painting really is saying, really is a map, okay, explain uh, how the believer of uh, 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 Manchu III uh, uh, Bodhisattva. Okay. 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 Sorry, this is again Chinese. Okay. So, for different morale, we, uh, we, we made this kind of animation. So you will be able to see uh, the user, yeah, and the audience will be able to see uh, the story of that. So, you, so for example, we put this kind of animation. Uh, how, what does the, the painting mean? Yeah. And we have also uh, worked on the uh, 2D restoration of uh, morale painting. Uh, because those painting uh, was ruined very badly, so you can hardly see what is there, all the detail. Uh, so, th but this one is, is uh, restored by some expert uh, in Donghuang Academy. And this one, uh, we further restore it to its, uh, the original. Um, we don't know if its original looks like that, yeah, but we just guess, yeah. Uh, but since we are not really 
uh, recovering the, the physical painting. So even if we did it wrong, at least we let the audience uh, have a rough idea of what this looks like. And we also work on the 3D uh, restoration of the, uh, this line and uh, the statue. Uh, as, as I've shown you, there, there's a lion tail. So we know there's a lion. But we don't know what does the lion looks like. Yeah? So um, our team member really go to uh, Sanxi, uh, the Wutai Mountain, and, and also go to different caves, try to find out what kind of restoration we should do. Yeah? But different experts have different ideas. So uh, we cannot come up with uh, a, a, a single conclusion. Fortunately, because it's a digital restoration, so we can make it different kind. Uh, some, some experts think uh, it should be this kind of stature. Some think it should be this kind. And some think it should be uh, people like uh, uh, Bodhisattva like this. And all of their opinion, we just collect them and uh, summarize them into uh, different uh, combination. Okay, then we can come up with different version of the restoration. Then people will have an idea what it looks like uh, 1,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, now, if you go into the cave, it's like this. But we can show uh, originally it should be like this. Yeah. So once we have this kind of uh, story animation, uh, 2D restoration and 3D restoration, so we are trying to put into an uh, interactive system for, uh, for the tourists to use, right? So I will begin to talk about these two versions. So to design that, we first go to observe. Uh, when tourists go in, usually you, you raise your head uh, to see the city. Or sometimes you use, uh, you don't use it, uh, but uh, the tour guide will use the flashlight to show you, to show a different spot, okay? To show, uh, to explain the story behind it, yeah. So based on those ob observations, we come up with three uh, user interface design. One we call uh, iFig, is interactive figurine. And one is uh, uh, interactive flashlight, so we can get, uh, hold a flashlight here. And one is the uh, uh, interactive window. It's, uh, uh, once we really use iPad, but then we use uh, uh, a flashlight, a different way of implementing it. I'll show uh, how we uh, do this uh, with the extension of our table, yeah. <coughs> so in addition to the, our table, we put a vertical screen here to show what you, you will see. And on, on the button, we, we have the horizontal screen showing the map of the, uh, the, the, map of the, the cave. And there's some control widget you can uh, uh, have different choice. Okay, this short video show uh, how you can manage it. Uh, this system we really, uh, we have sent it to Dunhuang, yeah. Okay, as you can see, I push something I push a button and you begin to play uh, the animation for certain uh, uh, morale painting. Yeah, and then if I want to uh, uh, see the 2D restoration, okay, there, there's some hotspot here. Okay, it's jumping here. I click the button. Then I can uh, get, uh, take this uh, uh, fresh light. This is like a fresh light, uh, fresh in the, uh, uh, the, the painting, but it's not getting brighter, but it's getting uh, newer, yeah. You can push a button to make it go back to 1,000 years ago, yeah. And we can also uh, uh, choose a, a hot spot on, uh, near the center uh, platform, and if you touch this part and you get a, the fresh light, you will be able to see uh, what it was before, okay. So this system has sent to um, Dunhuang last year yeah, because uh, two years ago they established this visitor center. Uh, uh, 
but they don't have the interactive one, so we, we send one system for them to try. And this is the President Wang, you know, he, he's very happy about this, yeah. Uh, but just before we send, send that to, uh, to, to the system to Dong Huang, uh, we began to work on the second version of it. It's called head mounted display version. I think most people know that uh, people will uh, <coughs> regard this year as the, the new era of the virtual reality. And there's a joke, yeah. People, uh, human evolve, okay from monkey and eventually to somewhere uh, like a bird, you can fly, yeah, you have uh, uh, superpower, yeah. But this is really a joke because uh, joke for, uh, a joke from uh, a Time Magazine, yeah, because Time Magazine in last year in, in August, uh, they have their Pelman Lucky uh, wearing uh, the, uh, the hair mount display, yeah. And and Pelman Lucky is somebody very lucky, I think, <laughs> because he's probably the, uh, uh, he's the most successful one uh, in a Kickstarter, yeah, because uh, he started a company uh, in 2012 and was sold to uh, uh, Facebook with $2 billion uh, in less than two years. And until now, we, we, didn't, we haven't been able to see uh, the the product, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, maybe in a few months, people will be able to have that, yeah, to have this Oculus Rift. But what we have now is the HTC Vibe. Yeah, HTC is a Taiwan company who makes something similar to that. Yeah, but something different is um, for for Vibe, each one is a sensor. Uh, but for for Oculus Rift, each one is an emitter. And, and the sensor is really outside, okay? So this one, you can uh, treat it as inside-out sensing for positioning, and this is the outside-in for positioning. But both can uh, have a quite accurate uh, positioning uh, accuracy for, to locate where is your head. Yeah. Of course, there are um, other brands, but none of those are as good as the... Uh, uh, the Vive and Oculus. Uh, Sony is prob probably, yeah, uh, some comparable. Uh, uh, but, but what we are using now is, uh, uh, is Vive, yeah. Uh, in fact, this is not a, a new stuff. Uh, back to 1965, uh, Ivan Sutherland, uh, okay, he is one of my uh, models, yeah. Uh, he has uh, implement something like this, that's the sword of uh, Domokos. And, but this is very expensive, yeah. And at that time, the computer is very slow, yeah. So, but he can uh, more or less ma make a, a, a prototype of, of the hand mount display. So, what, what we have did is we, uh, uh, we have an exhibition um, about one and a half year, year ago in Museum of uh, uh, NTUE in Taipei, uh, <coughs> we let people experience uh, the, the virtual touring of the cave by flying inside. Yeah, you can jump and glide uh, in in a cave. The idea is you you wear your uh, hand mount display. First, you see a small exhibition like this, and that will grow. Uh, and let you see the, the whole cave, yeah. This is only part of the cave, but once you wear the, uh, the hand mount display, you will be able to see the whole cave, yeah, surrounding you. Just like a replica, yeah. But uh, for the replica, it's still in a physical world, and this is virtual. So to experience the virtual world, you don't have to travel all the way to the gate. You, you can even uh, do it at home, yeah. <coughs> Okay, so we have, in fact, we have tried to uh, study, trying to study a different way of uh, exploration in a virtual uh, space. Uh, so what I've shown is, is the jump and the glide. Uh, okay, so this one is uh, the jump and glide. You can see my student, yeah. 
you just jump. When, whenever you jump, it is uh, go up. And then use your, your tilt of your body to, uh, to control uh, the direction of your fly. Yeah. Yeah. So with this way, you can, you can kind of uh, moving around in, in this cave, like uh, uh, the spirit or the, uh, some people call it DT or uh, Aspara. Yeah. Just Fei Tian. Yeah. Dong Huang. Dong Huang has a very famous uh, called flying spirit. Yeah. And another way of exploring the virtual space is just by walking. Yeah. Uh, but to, in order to sense where you are, uh, you are walk, uh, you, you need to have some sensor. Either you wear some, uh, some shoes, or here to do the experiment, we really uh, put some Vicon marker uh, on, on the foot of the user. So it, you will be able to, uh, our system will be able to know where does this, uh, people, this person go. So there's a marker and there's some light come. So do you know why she's stepping here? Yeah, because if you if keep on walking, he will bump into the, the table, right? So when, when, before he bump into the wall, he, uh, in uh, eyeglasses, he will be able to see a barrier. Uh, so it will stop uh, just by stepping. But th this is kind of um, not natural, yeah, because people don't walk this way. So, uh, uh, although it's a, it's a way of letting the, the, the system know that you are moving forward, but for people, um, it's kind of strange, yeah. So, so we have also tried another way of uh, moving around. This is by, uh, by portal, yeah. The portal is some, uh, some mode used by VR game. There's a game called uh, Bachika there. Uh, this is exactly using this kind of uh, a portal. So uh, this kind of portal allow people to transfer to a des destination instantaneously. Okay, it's not smooth, so it gives you some very abrupt change, but it's a very efficient way because you can move from uh, this part of the room direct to that part of the room, yeah, by just one click. Okay, you, you, for this portal, you can project uh, your portal somewhere. Yeah. When you project portal somewhere, you will be able to see uh, uh, what you will see if you go over there. Then you make sure if, if that's the place you want to go, you push the button, okay, then you immediately go over there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's stuck. Yeah. Something. I must have struck twice, yeah. But anyway, that, that gives you an idea that you just uh, pinpoint to where you want to go and take a peek of what it looks like. If that's where you want to go, you push a button, you immediately uh, jump there, okay. Uh, so when we try all of that, we, we, we do some experiment, we find uh, the portal is the most efficient one. That's why they put, uh, use it in a game because you can, uh, Probably you can move from here. If I can see our hotel, I just click a button, I can jump direct to the hotel, right? Uh, by jump and glide, you need to take some time, like a bird, you fly over there. By walking, it takes much longer, right? Uh, so th this one is the most efficient one, is definitely. But this is not so intuitive, yeah? Sometimes you, you, uh, it's not seamless, yeah? So uh, jump and glide, most people like this better, yeah? Uh, walking is also good, but uh, but only if you have enough space to walk, yeah. For example, you have a uh, 40 meters space to, to explore, but you are now in a three meter room, right? So how can you explore a 14 meter space uh, in a three meter room? So you need to like a step in uh, on the ground, yeah? not, not moving, so, but it's not very intuitive. Uh, therefore, people don't, uh, like uh, they said much as this, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but
But for the simplicity of device, these two are almost the same because you need only some, uh, some gyro kind of, uh, uh, some inertial measurement unit. And for walking, it takes much more uh, effort to, to, uh, to invent this kind of device for walking, yeah. So uh, that's why we choose the jump and glide, yeah. Okay, now, so I have, few, I have a few minutes to, to discuss some of the future uh, direction. Uh, when we work on jump and glide, we, uh, my, uh, my student did some of the Spider-Man, yeah. Uh, uh, last year we showed this Spider-Man in the C-graph uh, emerging technology. So <coughs> the user can throw out the spider silk and when you pull, you feel like you, you fly immediately to, to that building, yeah, yeah. And you can also jump, yeah, and glide, but, and, but you can also use the, the, the silk, yeah. And now we are also working uh, with uh, Gu Gong on, for the touring to the Chinese painting. Uh, this painting is called the Autumn in Che and Hua Mountains, yeah. And uh, it, this is one of the important uh, collection of National Paris Museum. And in fact, the uh, in initial version of this one is now on exhibition in Taizong. Uh, I will show a video. Uh, okay, on the, on the right is the original painting. On the left uh, is the virtual environment that we render so that people can have an a feeling of touring into the painting, yeah. Uh, this is only one shot, but uh, of, of course, because this kind of virtual reality system, the user can interact, right? You can look up, look down, and you can uh, change the direction of your viewing. Okay, so this, this is another way of using the virtual reality. And we are also working on uh, 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 this kind of space worker to let people to uh, walk around in the outer space uh, uh, above the, uh, the Earth or even to the Mars. Uh, and these are supposed to, uh, to be demonstrated in the, in the National Museum of uh, Natural Science. Uh, in fact, uh, next year, the, our National Museum of Na uh, Natural Science is going to um, exhibit the, the Dunhuang uh, replica also uh, uh, around April. Yeah. So they, they will put those together. To, uh. <coughs> and in addition to virtual reality, I, I would like to mention uh, the augmented reality uh, at the end. Yeah, because virtual reality is only the first stage, yeah. Uh, both virtual reality and augmented re reality require you uh, to wear something, yeah. You need a display to, to see the computer uh, generated image. But virtual reality gives you an immersive environment. So once you, you are in the virtual reality, you don't see the environment, yeah. For example, you go to the Ma or you go to the cave, right? But augmented reality, you still see the environment. So we have a project called Tai Chi project. Um, we can teach people to practice Tai Chi, and but with different mode, we can have the coach or the master, uh, Tai Chi master, uh, playing the Tai Chi surrounding you, uh, standing on the floating carpet, or standing on the ground, or even uh, uh, coincide with you, enter your body so that you know exactly how high you have to raise your hand for certain movement. So we, we are working on this kind of thing, yeah. Uh, and people will say that there's a very famous uh, uh, augmented reality game recently, right? Uh, uh, Pokemon Go, yeah. And, and this really uh, uh, also a virtual reality game, but you, you see, this, this image is purposely shot in this direction because usually uh, the camera is not that uh, uh, 
clever or uh, to identify uh, where is the floor and where uh, is the object. So you, for example, if you have tried it, uh, try to play that game, you, 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 you may be able to, you may try to do some translation and you will, you will see the, you, the monster will just translate with you, just like a, like a moon. <laughs> Yeah, but but the the monster is not in an infinity distance, right? So it should stay where it is, right? Yeah, but because uh, the technology at this moment for augmented is not that good yet, so it's not really that perfect. But this will certainly drive uh, the technology. Yeah, in fact, the augmented reality is not new either. Yeah. Uh, but now it's only adopted by the very expensive uh, machine. Uh, for example, Da Vinci surgery machine is an uh, augmented reality uh, system, but extremely expensive, right? And also, uh, this kind of hel helmet mounted display on the combat air aircraft is also very expensive. Uh, they are all augmented reality, but no more people like us has no chance to use it. Uh, yeah, but. We all know Google Glass. Uh, Google Glass is, is not a successful product, but it at least brings uh, our attention to it. And at this moment, when we do the uh, uh, experiment, we are using the absence glass like this, but it is not so good. Uh, uh, so recently, we began to use the Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, it, it, its performance is much better. And in fact, all of us are waiting for this uh, Magic leap, huh? This is really some magic because they are using a light field, um, and this company uh, uh, really st uh, start up before uh, before Oculus. It's two years before Oculus, but now the the value has go up to like uh, more than four billion dollar. Yeah, Google and uh, Alibaba has all invested in uh, this company, but. Up to this point, most people didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, so we don't know uh, when it, it will come up. But when it come up, because it's using the light field, so there's no conflict between the accommodation and the virgins. So this will make uh, us feel much better when we, we are looking at the information augmented on the real uh, physical space. So Ghana has this prediction, uh, uh, this kind of hype curve. You can see virtual reality uh, two years ago, is, they predict is already here. Yeah. And augmented reality is somewhere uh, uh, going down. In fact, virtual reality has some, uh, once been very high, you know, like 20 years ago, but it, it go to the bottom. Now, recently, it just began to go up. And, and last year, it showed that it's going up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, augmented reality goes down a little bit. But I think eventually, uh, this two technology is soon going to move uh, this direction. So if we come up to uh, the first question, uh, does data construct reality? Yeah. Uh, I think the answer really depends on how you, how you interpret it. Uh, when I look at this uh, question, I, I, I begin to ask myself, what is reality? Yeah, because if you have ever do meditation, you will know that uh, the, the Diamond Sutra say all things contrived are like dreams, illusion, bubble, shadow, and a dewdrop or lightning, and they should be regarded as such. So which means, are you sure that reality that I'm touching here is not just an illusion of mine? Okay, this is more philosophical <laughs> question, yeah, yeah. But this is hard to answer, yeah. But uh, I certainly know that uh, the data does construct the virtual reality because we can use all the data we collect to construct the virtual reality and to let you feel like that you are really in that environment, yeah. And, and with this technology, or with the data, we can also uh, enable the augmented reality, which means we can uh, augment uh, more information on our physical world, and that the human 
has more power uh, to live in this physical world. So, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, thank you.